The following podcast is a next level production. Show me your match your profile. No. <gasps> Jennifer. Gab. Baby steps. Okay, there we go. All right. Quite nice, actually. Oh my god. You are not using your corporate headshot as your profile photo. Je- <laughs> What's your first day gonna be? Webinar? This is exactly what Come you on. Want to Okay, there's no judgment. But that was a really bad choice. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Season 1, Episodes 4, 5, and 6. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, why are they doing so many in a row? Well, honestly, I've been behind because I've been dealing with some, you know, health issues and journeys and trying to fix them uh, (laughs) during this time. Uh, And we kind of skipped a few, so I'm trying to play catch-up. So that way we're just going to bang out four, five, and six of the, of this particular series right now. Bear with us, but the, the remaining episodes will be consecutive though. Yeah. But with this, uh, we'll move right into, uh, She-Hulk Attorney at Law season one, episode four. This is not real magic. So is uh, this not real magic? Oh, is this not real magic? <laughs> 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 so, uh, we'll. We'll jump right into that with the synopsis. Yeah, She-Hulk's new client, Wong, is suing for unauthorized use of the mystic arts. Pretty simple. (laughs) Pretty simple, yep. (laughs) Yeah, apparently a lot of things happen. Uh, Initial thoughts on this one. The very first time I watched it and I saw them talk about Titania on the previously on, I hoped that we would get more of uh, Jamila uh jamil but of course i think we just we get a brief shot of her face on on the tv and then of course at the end uh we get the tie-in to the next to the next episode episode five so it's kind of cool we're doing at least four and five together and then six is a little bit different but yeah. uh, i i mean i i really enjoyed four there's a whole lot i mean four had probably maybe the most comedy of the in kind of the what was kind of the B story or the C story, I guess. Yeah, you know. Yeah, mostly uh, the the humor was mostly around Madison mm. and uh, and Wong, and then that was a side story. If you think about it, even though it's like a heart of what was going on with Wong, but uh, also Jen and her journey into uh, Matcher app, yeah, or whatever the, it is, the and going world, on dates. yeah, whatever it was, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's showing her turmoil of dealing with being She-Hulk as well as Jen and how she's always being turned down for just her and mm-hmm. then everybody loving embracing the idea of She-Hulk. Yeah. Yeah, like you I I enjoyed it for the humor aspects totally and they really uh, they had me laughing at, uh, like a bunch of times definitely within this episode and a lot of it had to do with Wong and Madison, and then mm-hmm. uh, obviously with uh, what Jen had to deal with. But also, this leads us into, or continues, what we'll talk about later on, of the experience from the last episode. So I have those in my notes, and like uh, what we're we're going to see later on when we cover four, uh, five, and six. But yeah, the because uh, we know that Jen got uh, got attacked. Mm-hmm. In the, the previous episode, from the Wrecking Crew, <laughs> if right. you want to call them that. Right. So, uh, and then this starts off with her father coming in to try to help, which, yeah. you know, like I said, I, I enjoyed it. It was very humorous. Uh, I know that out of the three of these episodes, that a lot of people didn't like one of them. I'm forgetting which one. I didn't like five. That was me. I don't know about the, the rest. I don't, five for me was just not a, it was, it wasn't my favorite. I'm sure, but we'll get to that when we get to five. I'll talk about why. Okay. Any special moments that you like that, that 
cater to your fancy. (laughs) We've already been talking about Madison and and Wong, but I'm going to kind of separate them a a little bit because, you know, Madison, uh, she's got her friends in the audience that were just hilarious to me as well. And her journey journey throughout the episode is, is, I I didn't notice until my third watch that she's carrying like a beating heart when she falls into Wong's TV room (laughs) there. She's got like a beating heart in her hand. And uh, so I wasn't sure. And I was trying to figure out where she came from when Wong ringed her in there towards the end. Because people are back there like shouting her name. And she's talking about, I was just going to show off my dance move or whatever, you know. And I just, (laughs) just her whole vibe I, you know i don't know if we're going to get to see the character ever again but uh, it would be it would be funny just to see where her and wong's journey is going to kind of take him because it, it looked like i don't know it looked like they had kind of a thing so but yeah yeah the, it, i i was feeling that too i was like well are they going to ship wong and madison <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> Wongison, I don't know. Wongison would be a new Wong-ison. thing. Make yeah. it happen. Hashtag that. Uh, yeah, to me, yeah, I enjoyed the character because it's it's like the over the top girl, like kind of mm-hmm. like a Jersey kind of girl. But uh, if you think about it, but the uh, it it really gets the chuckles out of me, especially when she first drops in on Wong, even with the heart, because you know, obviously Donnie Blaze screwed up and just like she got sucked into this dimension and then she had to make a deal with a demon to get out and then she yeah. gets dropped in wong's uh place now it's pretty funny because now we get to see wong becoming more uh modernized over the years and this is one of them where you know he she kind of like spoils the sperano's in that <laughs> season five episode 12 long-term parking is on the screen when she's when they're watching and then she just like Oh, don't you hate it that they killed Adriana in this episode? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then that leads us to where, you know, who he has to find out. And he finds out it's Donnie Blaze and how he's like a trick magician. But apparently he tried to be with Wong and the rest of them out there. Yeah, I think he said he had, he spent a week. He was a, a week at Kermitage, and then before they had to before they kicked him out or whatever. Yeah, whatever but he still was. got to keep his sling ring. Apparently, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved Wong in this episode. I, you, you, I loved he did a little dance move kind of thing before he sat down to settle in for his Sopranos with his snack and his TV break. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, it, it's I love it that we saw him before the title card and Jin in one of her fourth wall breaks talks about him. Mm. And uh, but you know, just it, it's one of those things that you can see that when he comes to Jen, he's obviously got some frustration in his voice because he's just spent however long he spent with Madison, you mm. know, and it just was was really, really a, another great moment. That office, when he's in the office with, with Jen there trying to convince her uh, to take his case was just was just another fun moment. Yeah, it was a fun moment in the sense the cease and desist between uh, Jen and Nikki mm-hmm. and how they're talking about his case. And she's like, do you have anything in writing? No, everybody. It's like it's just like the word of the carpetage. It's like okay, she's just looking at it, and then of course, yeah, you know, we get the typical thing that we saw in the advertisements for before the show even started. It's like mm-hmm. no, it, it, you know, it's like no, we do this based upon law, <laughs> not yeah. the laws of Ashanti. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was great. But uh, the, well, let's talk about Donnie Blaze. Now, Donnie okay. Blaze is an interesting character to me for the fact that Donnie Blaze. Now, think about it. Donnie Blaze, Johnny Blaze. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that'll come into play later on because they not interest, introduced uh, the Ghost Rider in the MCU right now just yet. All The only time we ever saw Ghost Rider is literally through Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or the Nicolas Cage movies that came out years ago. Right. So I think this is kind of like a small setup. So I like the link to that. Has nothing really to do with what Donnie is doing. Because Donnie is just dealing with dimensions and trying to be a typical trick magician that's out there. Of course, Wong hates the idea that he's using the uh, the magics that he learned at the the Carmitage, you know. Yeah, he he was an interesting character. I, again, I, I like that at the end we kind of wrap up that story there at the end when She Hulk has got the you know she she's got the little guy and she's like, before I throw him back, are you going to accept the cease and desist order? And they're like, yes, yes, we will. So uh, I, I like to kind of wrap that story up. We don't really need to worry about that coming back or seeing. No, like, I, seeing I it think again. it's like yeah, it's just bottled for this one. 
Mm-hmm. But it, it sets up at least you know who Donnie Blaze is. He might come back later. Who knows? But it, it's like this is all done. You know, we, right. they don't have to worry about it. Plus, uh, the fact that, you know, it all occurs during the time that uh, she's going on that, that date from the Matcher app. <laughs> and she's on the couch with the guy and, mm-hmm. he, he, you know, Wong literally just drags her in. And he yeah. goes, he's like, help me out. And it's like, you know, because the, all these little demons come out. And that's one of the things that I like from the, uh, the trick that he did because he, what, what was it? Like a bird. And then there was an egg on his hand. Yeah. And the egg hatches and it turns into this little micro demon. Looks like, like a squirrel on steroids. Yeah. And then, and then it starts attacking, but then multiple come out when he's trying to get rid of it. And then yeah. they grow. And then yeah. he, that's when we get Jen brought in and they, they do this battle. But even Wong's like, you know, do your Hulk thing. She goes, they're not dying. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh. and that's the first time I ever thought of like, wow, they're, they're talking about killing things on this show mm-hmm. now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, that was an issue. You know, Donnie is, uh, we get another case of somebody flipping the bird. We, I forgot to mention that a second ago. Yeah. Cause when he's in the courtroom, he's like, look, I have a bird. And he's, he's flipped his middle finger. And I was like, man, Disney, that's, uh, that's pretty edgy. Yeah. But yeah. Let's talk about Jin's, Jin and Shiolk's dates. So the first guy that Jin matches up with is just kind of a douche. You know, he's looking at his phone. He's oh, looking as at Jin, women. No. Yeah, just- as this was saying, as Jin, yeah. Yeah, She. I loved the moment when, uh, as Jin, she gets a notification that her phone says, no new matches. And she's like, why is this a notification? Like, why yeah. are you telling me I've got no matches? So then, of course, she decides to create a profile as she hulk and we get the the several dates bad dates that even she hulk gets on before she finally meets the guy the one night stand pediatric you know oncologist uh who just bounces in the yeah, morning because, and- yeah he was disturbed he's like who are you i'm jen i was you he's like yeah and then she it's one of those things like he was just the idea he thought she was always she hulk Right. And right. and it's when it's like, oh, this is not what I was in for. So he just up and leaves. Mm-hmm. But it, it to me, that was, uh, you know, you could see it from the side of a woman th- that has to go on these dates based upon looks and what they what guys want. And, yeah. you know, and then she kind of took advantage of the situation, too, through, through the matcher app with that guy. If you think about it, she was like she just literally picks him up and brings him to bed. Oh, yeah. She like she back. right away, as soon as she finds out that he's a he's a decent and he's attractive, she's like, let's go home. You know, I'm like, whoa, moving a little fast there. But, yep. uh, you know, I guess she just needed to get some. So, yeah, well, <laughs> or, or yeah, I think she also wanted to get some when she got back from the fight. I guess she was all mm-hmm. pumped up with killing those little demons. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, as, uh, the funny thing too about this episode is the fourth wall breaks. I've been counting them. So we got mm-hmm. three total. So in the beginning with her talking about Wong being back and how, oh, I, it's like, yes, it's one of those. Mm-hmm. You're happy. Wong's here. And it's like, yeah, this would be something that everybody tweets about. Right. Which literally that's what happened when this episode came up. The next one is when she steals, uh, the, that, uh, doctor's uh shirt or a sweater after he spilt the wine she just tosses yeah. it back and looks at it it's, <laughs> she just tosses and that's, it she doesn't really say anything there but she there just looks directly she, at it yeah and and so that's i call those the the not fourth wall breaks because there's two or three instances in the episode where you, you kind of think it's going to be a fourth wall break and then suddenly we realize oh no the other people are listening to her you know uh there was two or three times in the episode we had the the not fourth wall break yeah. so yeah when the doctor leaves in the morning she does that she just looks at it and that's mm-hmm. it yeah 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 the line about uh dating in your 30s was was a fourth wall break and then of course at the end she lets us know there's going to be a tag that we want we'll, won't want to miss yeah. you know so i uh, yeah those the fourth wall breaks in this episode were really I, and that may be that well we'll talk about that in episode when we get to episode five yeah i did notice one other thing i noticed that jane and this is a spoiler if anybody hasn't watched thor love and thunder yet i don't know why you you hadn't been but uh <laughs> skip ahead about 30, 20, 30 seconds. Okay, there's your warning. I did notice that Jane as Thor is in the Marvel oh, crawl. Okay. At the Marvel Studios crawl. It's a it's a very quick shot of her when she turns to the camera when she first turns to the camera and you see her in the, the mask and stuff. So that's the only recent as of episode four that's the only recent one that i saw i did see ms marvel okay. in it uh, yeah i think six, it's i think so. it's set up or reflecting on when stuff that they've six. already done 
because there's there's still speculation of hey mm-hmm. can we bring yeah. back her as the mighty thor cuz not you know I, you know spoilers everybody right. for right. having seen thor love and thunder <laughs> give a few seconds please <laughs> so all right yeah so basically jane dies at the very end of thor and love and thunder but that doesn't really mean that they can't mm-hmm. bring her back through an alternate dimension. Obviously, we're going to get... Oh, of course not. ...secret wars, and I've said it before, the the secret wars that the Feige is most likely setting up is going to be the one where it was from 2015, when they uh, they had a run, and I, I forget who it was, uh, Dan Slott, John Byrne, I, I, not John Byrne, uh, but even still, like a whole bunch of writers and artists were involved in it. And it's multiple dimensions. Mm -hmm. It's the multiverse coming together and you have different versions of different people. You could have multiple versions of Thor, multiple versions of Reed Richards, uh, Hulk, anybody. We already had multiple Spider-Mans. So obviously it's a setup for us to get to Mm -hmm. that point. Yeah. The only other note I really have, besides I've already gone through kind of all my moments, the only other note I have is Wong mentioned a wedding. Yeah. He said, I think we have some leftover yeah. from the wedding. Whose nope, wedding is nope, he talking but about? That's is a that good question. I'd like to know which wedding that something? is. Because, yeah, he, he, when he talks about Madison at the very end, they were talking about um, mm-hmm. a yak milk. Yep. The she goes, milk, yeah, the, Wong, the, what's the, the weirdest drink you have had? And yeah. Wong just turns back and he goes, vodka and yak milk. Uh, never again. But he, and then she goes, "Do you have anything? Any of that?" He goes, "Yeah, we have some in the fridge." She wants to try it, <laughs> but apparently he's a yeah. gin and tonic kind of guy. Yeah. The only other quote I would have would be Wong, and this is during the courtroom. So, oh no, it's probably with him and Jen saying, "Can we send Donnie to the mirror dimension? He probably won't die." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got a few quotes. Uh, when, when we first meet Madison in Wong, she says, who are you? Are you the Goblin King? And he just says no. Like, no context <laughs> or anything. He just says no. Uh, and, uh, uh, and of course, Donnie says the title of the episode. He says, is this not real magic? Your ex- elegancy when he's talking to the judge, yep. you know, uh, so there's our mic drop moment. But then uh, the other one I had got was when Wong we talked about when Wong drags her into the fight. He says, come on, I feel like <laughs> that your dad. That is true. So I that, that is true, pretty, the way he was talking to her. that was a pretty good, pretty good one. <laughs> well, I, it, what I love is how they've been developing. Like your dad, you know? So, uh, and now, mind you, he wasn't a huge character in the mm-hmm. uh, the comics. So I'm glad that, that way you have this kind of a character. It's kind of like, um, oh, I forget the guy's name, but in Ant-Man, uh, the one who oh, just yeah. talks so fast. Yeah. Maurice, uh, yeah, Maurice. Him. I love him. Yeah, Maurice. Yeah, so Maurice is always that. He's such a character unto himself, but he's also helpful. But in this case, Wong is like you know he's kind of super. So yeah, yeah, it's 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 gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun to see Wong, you know, in more of these kind of comedic roles. Yeah, yeah. and more involved too. All right, uh, I think that wraps it for that episode. episode. Four? Yeah, yeah, and episode leaves- four. We can move right along into episode five, Mean Green and Straight Port Into These Jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great title. That was fun to write. She-Hulk discovers that Titania owns the name She-Hulk and is suing her for trademark infringement. Just quick little note there. Yep. Well, considering at the very end, she was subpoenaed on the last right, episode. At the end of four, we get the yeah, action. And I love that she opens the door and she knows exactly who the guy, like she, she recognizes that he's a process server. She can tell. Uh, what he what he is right mm-hmm. away he doesn't he he does the pretense of a package and she's like come on i know you're a process server you know and so she uh either it was just it was just fun a fun little lawyer moment that she could recognize the situation yeah she's used to it she's seen it before mm-hmm. <laughs> overall thoughts of this particular episode uh you want to talk about you said this is the one you weren't really too yeah, about. it wasn't my favorite, you know, even even though it had Jamila Jamil in it, which I absolutely love. There weren't that many fourth wall breaks, but I think you you may have noticed more than I did. Hmm. There was no tag on this one, which was kind of a, a bummer. And of course, the end reveal was great, but then we haven't seen that yet. The end reveal of seeing Daredevil's Cal there hmm. in the guy's shop. But of course, now we haven't we haven't seen him yet. And Plus, we didn't get to see her outfits. We only got to see one dress in the next episode. So it just, yeah. five just felt like a, I don't know. It just felt like it was almost a filler episode. It was. It, I, it was a filler episode, but it was something in a sense of, they were trying to give us something a little bit more for 
for Jen to, with lawyering, I think. They, they wanted mm-hmm. to get us more in the courtroom based upon what she does. Yeah. So I'm thinking that's really, it's like, all right, well, we only kind of inserted this in X amount of episodes. Let's devote this. Since it is revolving around her mm-hmm. and trademark law as well as copyright law. So it, it kind of makes sense. And yeah. I thought it was pretty cool, though. Mainly for the fact that I had to learn trademark and copyright law when I was going to school for audio engineering and oh, when cool. I went to uh, for Mercy College for when I try to continue my uh, degree for audio engineering. Oh, you had okay. to sit there and learn all this stuff. And the best person to really listen to about this particular episode would be Penny and Greg. And Penny is, was an attorney. Right. And she is very familiar with uh, a lot of that stuff. I don't know if she was doing trademark, but she is familiar with it. And uh, that could be found on Podcastica, and mm-hmm. it's called uh, she Hulk Cast. So Absolutely. if you guys are really more interested in the law of that, I would go more towards Penny. Me, I only go on what I remember and what right. I know from trademarks that I've put into because, yeah, listeners, yeah, anybody who wants to take up certain things like the name Panels the Pixels podcast, please don't because it is trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> so uh but yeah i i enjoyed the episode myself i enjoyed it for that reason okay. um there's a few things that that made me cackle and laugh about it and get giddy too because of the the weird stuff that went in there like you know uh to, in order for her to like the side story with nikki and pug and mm-hmm. they have to get go look for a costume for her yeah, and the yeah, fact that, that Pug good. is helping out, I thought that was pretty cool. And the fact that you know, it's like they he he goes in there and he gives the name and he goes, yeah, uh, and then he finally lets him in. And it's all like bootleg merchandise, right? Alonzo just shows him all bootlegs. It's like Avengers <laughs> and Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. that. That was a good. That was a good moment. It was good seeing Nikki bonding with the other lawyers in these in these two episodes here that we're gonna. Get to when we get to six as well. So really, really cool. Yeah, we're getting more Nikki out of this, it seems, which yeah. is cool. I really liked that her cousin was just oblivious to the fact that she didn't have She Hulk trademarked. And he's got all this this stuff that he bought that he wants her to sign, and she's like, no. And then I love the 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 quote when she walks in to Titania with the She Hulk stuff, and and Titan, she says, "I don't want to cut." The double meaning there of she's cutting in line, but she also doesn't want to cut of the merchandise. I thought was really that was a kind of a cool line to throw in there when uh, Tatiana Titania told her to go back to the back of the line. So. Yeah, and uh, the fact that they called it, uh, what was it, Swill, um, Snake Oil. Snake Oil, yeah. She said yeah. it's literally Snake Oil. <laughs> but literally, if you look at everything that um, Jamila Jamil is is wearing as Titania and the marketing for uh, the She-Hulk stuff that she's got, a lot of it has purple and green in it. And those are the colors of She-Hulk within the comics. Mm, okay. And it's literally from like even the, from the title card, too. And it actually, the title card in the very beginning is literally She Hulk, whatever. And it was like basically for the branding of the snake oil that yeah, she's trying titania. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She Hulk, She Hulk brand uh, stuff. And then booty, I, I love what her <laughs> Jen's boss about what was it that the, he wanted? He saw the blast billboard. drink. He's like, I how do I how, how come I saw a billboard for She Hulk's booty blast or something like that drink? And that's when Jen starts to explain to him that she doesn't have a trademark on the name. He's like, I really don't care. <laughs> so, but then I, you know, I did love that. That was kind of a lawyering moment there, where she says she's going to take care of it, and he's like, "No, you're not going to defend. You're not going to defend yourself, or you're not going to do this case yourself." Mallory is going to try this case, yeah. and so we got that moment where where Jen gets to kind of bond with Mallory in this mm-hmm. in this episode. So there were some cool things she does. You know, she also talks talks about the benefits of being she hulk the fact that she can walk home you know she can walk in a dark alley like we saw in, in the end of episode three mm-hmm. there where she got attacked and so it's it's it, there's there's moments in this this episode that just it just wasn't my favorite is all yeah i know i got it other things that i i actually did enjoy is the fact that they had to bring in her matches from as she hulk because that was they great real- they realized that it's like, oh, she used the name before and she put it on it as herself through a match app, which mm-hmm. automatically it's already was in use. Right. So if somebody already has it in play and use. It's kind of harder to trademark because you would have to contact that other person and say, like, you would have to literally just be like, I need to buy you out or something. 
and that then it goes through. But the fact is, they see every guy that she dated. Yeah, for the actual trial, they had the uh, the creepy guy that she went out with. Mm-hmm. The, the first one was a creep. Then you had Todd, I think his name was, and then the doctor. Yeah, yeah, and the doctor admits that yeah, if he if he had been Jen, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have gone out with her. And so we see this not just using the she hole name, but but. Uh, yeah, so it was it like I'm with you. The courtroom scenes were good. I did to have that as a uh, as a positive. Yeah, the animation of her face in those courtroom mm-hmm. scenes, though, I would normally not notice. It just looked bad. I don't know. What, yeah, I, I I I had spoken to somebody when uh, I think I mentioned it before. When Rob and I went to Terrificon, he introduced me to his comic guy. The guy who owns his own store, he didn't have a, a table, but he was there to look around and get some comics, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But I was talking to that guy, and he was telling me that he worked at DC and Marvel at one point. And he was the one that told me for a lot of these shows or the movies, like the shows on TV for like HBO Max, things like that, for like what Peacemaker and stuff, because you have animation in there. Right. They literally force it down the animator's throats. To work 24-7 until the 11th hour to right. get it right. My mother, who I, never watches these shows, she said that to me. She goes, the animation didn't look that great. It didn't look fluid. Yeah, and other episodes have been fine. It's, it's looked great. Like, I haven't even noticed it. It just, this one, I don't know what it was about this one that. Yeah, it it, it might have been at a time when they had it, when they dropped it, they didn't get it in on time. Yeah. And to make it fluid, I don't know, but. I was told that they pushed those guys. Hmm. Okay. You spoke about the Daredevil costume. So, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit more because we did cover Daredevil when it was on Netflix. Mm-hmm. But uh, the costume is a little bit different. So the, the cowl is yellow and red. So we're going back to the yellow and red suit. Uh, I feel sorry for the original costume maker <laughs> from the original Netflix show. Yeah. He's not going to be back because now we got uh, the Drip Broker. And the Drip Broker is uh, an interesting character. Uh, apparently, he is making suits for other superheroes. I mm-hmm. love the fact that Nikki states that, oh, she's an Avenger. Oh, well, she's she was considered for it to be an Avenger. She's a Hulk. And then the guy didn't realize it until when Jen, you know, changes. Have they told us? Have they told us where this is set? What city is this in? Is it in? It's in Los Angeles. Is that's what I thought. It's in Los Angeles, so it, it would be a different guy because the Daredevil, the Daredevil guy would be in New York. New York. So yeah, which so makes, this would be a different, which is which is going to be interesting for the character moving Daredevil. out of Hell's, Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, because it's weird. How does Matt go from uh, Hell's Kitchen in New York to Los Angeles? To Los Angeles. He- yeah. What, was he brought there particularly, or was he just there to get his costume, and then he winds up going there, and then, oh, I was visiting a friend, and I'm you, acting as their lawyer or something. Yeah, that could be could be anything, so it'll be interesting yeah. once we, whenever we do get him. It's just, it's... And we, we, also, we also have to see that confrontation on the top of the building that we know, because that's the first look that we got. Mm-hmm. There was also talks of, like, a, a high-end character that's going to be talked about that's being represented for one of the legal teams not i don't think it's going to be jen's but i think it's going to be something that they have to go through maybe he's brought in for that particular reason because maybe that character was from new york but we won't know until that time comes we have another three more three episodes yeah three or four more i mean counting six we've got four more episodes so yeah that's all i had for five i didn't have i already said all my quotes that i had yeah, same here. Uh, the one thing that I liked is the end credits because you see her boss with the drink. Yeah, the- I've been I've started to notice that that they're 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 intercutting the scenes that the characters talk about. Yes. They're intercutting courtroom draw uh, drawings of those scenes, like we see Nikki and Pug with the sneakers at yep. the end of this one, where she because she decides, you know, she says, "Oh, I'll get your sneakers if you'll do this for me." And so, so yeah, I, I am really enjoying watching those end credits when they when they have those moments in there that we didn't get to see in the episode. What I liked about one of that one of the end credit scenes that we get that drawing it, it is with Pug and Nikki, and we see his sneaker collection, which you know they literally hint at Iron Man mm-hmm. with like because he wanted to get the new Iron Man sneakers, kind of like the Michael Jordans, you know. Yeah, 
And uh, if you look at that room where he has all his sneakers, and I'm, trust me, in what I do in home theater installation, I used to, uh, I went to a guy who was a basketball player. He had literally walls of shelves where his, his sneakers were that looked right. like that. But in this case, uh, they were all based upon superheroes. Oh, you see, okay. You see Captain America, you see Iron Man, you see a Cyclops, so I guess that's uh, instituting... Uh, x-men into the, the mcu as well okay. through you know just through visual deadpool hawkeye submariner scarlet witch wolverine hulk vision the thing uh, there's like a whole slew of them if you freeze frame it and go through each one and look at the color schemes on there you can match it up based upon the the character the thing one is like very obvious because it's all rock interesting interesting it's all yellow rock <laughs> very cool yeah i didn't do that so i'd that's cool, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all I had regarding this particular episode. Guess we can move on to the next one? Yeah. Episode six. Episode six. All right. So, episode six is entitled Just, Just Jen. Just Jen. Yep. Just Jen. So, Jen is a bridesmaid at a friend's wedding, a stressful event compounded by uniquely She Hulk issues. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, it's more Jen issues because it's still relating to She-Hulk. Yeah, my initial thoughts on this one, I, I enjoyed it. It was funny. It's another funny one, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But you could see the, the turmoil that women have at going to these events. And if there's that competitive mentality amongst women or overshining somebody. Because when Jen does go to the, the wedding, she's as She-Hulk. Right. And Lulu goes... I need to talk to you. And then she goes, Oh, this is my day, my day. Right. So it's like, that was like, it's all about the co competition of like, you know, the focus of what it is. Mm -hmm. And then Jen at that point of all things before then never really wanted to be she Hulk out in public like that. It was just for her to be like, Oh, I could be popular now. You know, yeah, I think she's kind of changing her tune on that though. Even though Titania kind of reminded her, of yeah. it in this episode so it'll be interesting to see what happens in episode seven if if we play into that at all so uh mm -hmm. yeah i love this one it, it totally for me made up for last week's uh last week's one um i actually sent a uh a live steve into podcastica she hulk cast for it so penny and greg got that and should be playing that on there i think theirs is already out uh should be playing it on theirs and this is the episode that i saw ms marvel in the Marvel Studios crawl. So they have added her huh. in there somewhere. It was real quick and I barely caught it, but I'm pretty sure that's what I saw was Ms. Marvel. So it's it's nice, like you said, they're adding these these shows and and characters as we're getting them, they're adding them to the to the, the crawl. So Yeah. Well let's move right into highlights. Uh like I said, I enjoyed it as a whole. It's just a more comedic aspect. Yeah, it was great. Uh the, the box opening scene at the beginning was just hilarious. I think I jumped every time uh Jen opened it and it popped and all that glitter popped out at her, you know. Um uh, you know, it was and there was part of me, there was a couple of moments in there when I was like, Is is this a is she being pranked in this wedding? Because they keep like uh Lulu comes out and asks her you know, oh, can you clean up out here? And then the, the other bridesmaids are like, oh, can you iron these shirts? And I'm like, where, where is this? Like, there was no context for it. I think that was the only thing no. that really confused me about the episode was they didn't give us, if they at least given us some context, like she said, she knew Lulu in high school, but she didn't say anything about her being a, like a mean girl or mm. them having a rivalry or anything like, like just a, a line thrown in there about that might have helped me understand why she was getting this treatment. But, uh, uh, and also the dress that Luke made for her, it really looked way better on She Hulk than it did on, on Jen. Jen. Uh, it, Jen it, well, it's funny. I thought it was supposed to grow on her, like to, to that's stretch. That's what I thought it was supposed to be like stretch and then, and then reduce when it when it became Jen. Her. But it looked like, it looked like she was just wearing another oversized dress again. As, yeah. as Jen, and I was like, this doesn't, you know, I thought it was supposed to stretch and move with her. Maybe I would, maybe I misunderstood that, or mm. maybe he just couldn't do that for this dress. I don't know, but it was, it was a little weird. First one for me would probably be uh, Mr. Immortal, was an interesting character for me. Yeah, I, I had this as my next one as well. So let's go. Let's talk yeah, about him. Yeah, let's talk about him. Well, this is a character directly from the comics itself, which is mm -hmm. funny because uh, in the comic, which is very different because this guy, in a, he, he tries to kill himself constantly. But in this case, they kind of make him a joke, which I think 
in the comic books it was because how could it be part? It's like he just doesn't die. Yeah, that, like <laughs> I, I remember one comic book scene where he's like in an airplane and it's crashing, and all the other heroes are trying to figure out how they save the passengers. He's just like, "I'll see you on the ground," and then like yep. jumps out. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what was that? Uh, what was that? Oh man, I'm trying to forget his name. Uh, the guy who in the '70s who stole three hundred thousand dollars and jumped oh, out. Oh, D.B. Cooper. Point. DB, yeah, just reminded yeah. me of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was great. All of his partners were great. I, I love that that whole scene. And we'll talk some more about that. But uh, but yeah, he's not really like it's not really a, his only power is that he doesn't die or he dies a little. I'm technically dead, but not for a, you know, yeah, like, not very long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was it was interesting. It was interesting. I, I loved the whole negotiating scene when uh, when Nikki is is getting. The difference that whole swivel where they swivel their chairs around to have mm. the discussion was hilarious to me. Uh, I love that Amy, the one who figured all this out and got the ball rolling, gets a, a sincere apology, you yep. know, and a 20 second stare. That's another well, one of those. It was supposed to be 15 second, and then he kind of it goes, Now it's 20 seconds. Now it's 20 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, I love that. And we get to see that. That's another one of those courtroom drawings at the end there where you see the two of them looking at each other and, and Nikki holding a stopwatch. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and, and it was pretty cool. But the funniest part of it was uh, when Nikki and Mallory were uh, were talking about him and how he he mentioned, he goes, well, I just die and I basically he's still married to them but he, he technically because he didn't really die yeah so this is the whole point of the divorces the fact is like he she goes oh you just leave and blah 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 he goes you're supposed to represent me you're supposed to back me up and she goes we it doesn't mean we have to like it <laughs> right exactly I love he jumps out when he jumped out the window I thought he was like not gonna use them as his lawyer but then later it comes on and he's still using him as his lawyer so I guess yeah. it was just a way to avoid that that confrontation like they said you're just avoiding confrontation is all your no, that's exactly <laughs> it he's wanted you know, to get out of there like any other guy it's like yeah. being screamed at by women <laughs> yeah yeah the best part too within uh when they were talking to the the wives of him mm -hmm. as they were debating and they were wondering how they got the information and nikki finds out and she writes it down it's intelligentsia is a a, a website or mm -hmm. something that's like a a social media group that is online now intelligentsia in the comic was led by multiple people okay of like very smart people, Doctor Doom, Modok, and the leader. Now, obviously, we haven't seen the last time we saw the leader was back in Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton at right. the very end, which was hinted. And I think that eventually we will get that. A lot of people are speculating that that guy Todd might be it, but I don't think so. I think he might be affiliated because the end scene credit we do see it. But uh, I really like the fact that we see a lot more with, like, peppered into the episode, especially with Jen. Yeah. Because they have a, uh, apparently somebody's putting in at the very end uh, into the website about, uh, probably on a message board or a comment mm -hmm. thread, saying, uh, and then it's uh, replying to Hulk King. Which is really weird. That's what it was uh, listed as. Right. Saying, is the plan engaged or something? But they also have surveillance on Jen. There's a whole platform or billboard of like people talking about how can she die? Right. How and then they got those her? needles, those big needles that I guess they're going to try to penetrate her skin with that big needle. They, so they tried, can... but they couldn't before with right. the wrecking But now crew. they've got yeah. those new, that's what I'm saying. Now they've got these other needles that look like they're bigger and they're probably going to try to actually they they hope it will punch her skin is what i'm assuming so which i'm thinking because remember that weird guy todd that she dated yeah you just talked you were just talking about him mm -hmm. yeah that's what i'm saying i'm thinking he was part of the wrecking crew because one of those guys the guy who had tried to use the needle and it bent mm -hmm. was covered in a ski mask you couldn't find mm -hmm. him his face okay possibly and I, I kind of stilled on it, and his teeth are very. He's got big teeth, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it like you could see that in the through the ski mask. So I'm really thinking mm -hmm. he's part of this, right? And that's where the weird questions about can vibranium puncture you came from during that date. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. He was. Yeah, can it hurt you or mm -hmm. something? So yeah. she goes, "Why do you have any?" Ha ha ha. Yeah, and then you know, I was really. I kept. I kept waiting for Josh to have something you know, like nefarious about him, but it, it seems like he's just an okay guy, but uh, we'll see, I guess yeah. if we, if we see some more of him, but yeah, I, I just, 
I love that her cousin is the DJ for the wedding and what do he call himself? Oh, Chad. <laughs> yeah. He called him uh, something oh, yeah. Hulk, DJ Hulk or something like that. I can't No, remember. I have it listed here. Yeah. I forgot what he says. Oh, it's hilarious too when I saw that. I was like, uh something about the incredible Chad or something yeah, like that. Yeah, Chulk or something like that. Yeah, it was it had Hulk no, in well, there somewhere. Yeah, I I I had it. Oh, it's a yeah, Inchedible. Inchedible, okay. Yeah, DJ Inchedible is his name. Okay. That's it. <laughs> so yeah, the fact that yeah, you know, that's he's DJing. It's like he, he she can't get away from him. Yeah, I, are, I love, are they bro- they're not brother and sister? No, they're, it's they're cousins. cousins. Yeah, cousins. Okay. So. Yeah, it was it was great her getting drunk and then like we talked about the other day when she's when Titania wants her to change and she can't do it. She's like, I forgot how, you know, and then she's <laughs> just gotta like concentrate on on Titania and she's able to to get the change. So I thought that was great. The fight to electric slide. Yep. <laughs> again, a pretty brief fight here. It didn't end quite the same way. This time we have Titania stumbling on some ice and uh, and you know hurting her veneers. Mm-hmm. Another one of those court courtroom drawings we see at her, the dentist at the end. Yeah. So that was cool. Just the whole thing with Josh again. I keep going back to that because I, I just can't. I don't know. I, I, I want him to be normal, but at the same time, eh, so I guess we'll see. If he Josh is which one the guy the, the, the nice no no the nice guy the, the guy she met here at the wedding the one oh, the one who she was the, talking to she was sharing French fries there as Jen at the yeah, end with okay. him you know and that's oh, yeah, that's where yeah. they had the surveillance so we saw that so I don't know yeah. if he's maybe involved in that I don't know if we're gonna see huh. him again or not I can't wait for the next one to come out so yeah one thing that I I, I noticed too within it um, Nikki calls her Shulky in the very yeah. beginning now. Shulky, uh, a lot of people are telling me, but I remember it back in the early, like late seventies, early eighties, when I was like reading comics as a kid. I remember the thing calling her Shulky at one point, oh, but okay. apparently it was prevalent in Dan Slott's uh, Sensational She Hulk. So okay. during that run in like the early two thousands, or and also in the nineties as yeah. well. But yeah, that's where that came from. So that it's like a name that people are. Like, before this episode came out, people were saying, oh, we're going to get the traditional whatever, what they call her. And I remember, I was like, I remember Thing calling her Shulky, but right. it's cool that Nikki gave her that. And I'm, yeah. I'm hoping that they use it more and more. Yeah, we'll see. I like Nikki in this episode, you know, her, her being the one that's negotiating with all the partners. Yes. And she's like the one woman, you just want cash, straight cash for you. And then, like, the other one gets this and gets this paid off or whatever. I thought was just her whole vibe. And, you know, Mallory just letting her kind of do her thing and then go, okay, we'll draw up the paperwork and have it all have it all taken yeah. care of. But, yeah, and then her and Nikki bonding there at the end. Nikki finding out that uh, Mallory is married and has at least one kid. You know, and so we're we're getting to know a little bit more about Mallory, and uh, it's just it's just really cool. I hope this I hope this uh, show comes back for another season. I'm enjoying it. I, I know I've got some friends that don't like it. They think I don't know. They they're weird. Uh, well, I I think it's it's trust me. There's a lot of people I know that didn't like Hawkeye. Right, exactly. Like there's like, or Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They they'll be like I didn't like that one, so I'll just you know honestly, not every Marvel. Our Disney Plus Marvel uh, show is going to be everybody's cup of tea, right. but the only reason why I'm into it is because I know it's going to lead into Easter eggs of what goes into the actual MCU, and then a lot of people are going to be like, well, how did you know that? Well, it was on this show. Right. And if you follow the shows, you can do that, but you know, some people will just be like, I just want to watch it as is, so that's yeah. fine. Yeah, so we'll see where it goes, but yeah. Yeah, no tag again on this one. I'm, I'm kind of missing the tags. But, yeah, uh, 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 that was actually brought up in the press, and they said, yeah, they only did X amount of tags, and they mm-hmm. realized that people were upset about it for the fact that they didn't have it, but they, I guess, once they started, they wanted more, mm-hmm. and and a lot of fans were like, well, this should have been a regular thing, but it's based upon what the uh, writers are able to come up with, Well, yeah, and, and I guess they couldn't come up with anything. Yeah, well, and like it was mentioned on uh, one of the other podcasts I listened to, they kind of did these in a different order than what they were originally going to put them as. So maybe yes. they didn't have the, you know, the, the three with tags all together at the beginning. I think mm. that's what, that's probably what made us expecting it or four, I guess with, ta- or yeah, four with tags, you know, all right in a row that, uh, that made us as an audience expect to see that every time. And then, so when we didn't see that it's like, mm. it's, it's jarring. So we'll see if we get some more or, or not, but hopefully. Yeah. As far as like fourth wall breaks, 
Well, there was one with Nikki prepping for the wedding. Mm -hmm. When she's talking to Nikki and she makes a comment about the wedding. Then the name of the episode, Just Jen, Just and how Jen. she didn't want it, uh, wanted to show up, uh, show up at the wedding that day after her friend Julie wanted her to just be Jen. Yeah, I thought that so. was great too that she changes her tune when she's actually. It sounded like she might have been a little drunk at her own wedding, you know, because like yes. the day before, the the day before, she's like, "Oh, I don't want you to be She Hulk. This is my day." And then the day of the wedding, she's like, "She Hulk is at my wedding," right. you know, and she's got so excited, <laughs> and uh, so I was really glad to see that turn because. It really, it, and again, it, it's it's kind of what you talked about with that Jen is starting to discover that she's more popular as She Hulk than as Jen. And I don't know if we're going to get an existential crisis about that uh, later mm -hmm. on or not, but uh, it, it is interesting Very that she's so. starting to, she may be starting to appreciate being She Hulk a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, she is. I love the fact that we get her as drunk Jen, though, throughout most of yeah. that wedding, though. Uh, the best is when she kind of drunk dolls Bruce. Yes. <laughs> She's and like, she goes, where are you? So, uh, and then it was, where are you? I haven't seen or heard from you in days, weeks, months. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow, it's got to be months at this point. So she's had the whole crisis of She-Hulk for a while now. Mm -hmm. And then it means that uh, Bruce is off world. He, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to bring that up at a, on another show or at another venue or, or movie. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. And that is all I had for episode six. Yeah, same here. I didn't even have quotes. Really. Yeah, I, I only got to watch it twice, so I'm probably going to definitely watch it again before episode seven comes out. But I'm, uh, I, it's, it's, it's been really fun, this, this series. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying yeah. it. So. Same here. I'm, you know, it, it's, I think it's a good comedic style break because it's not all, all serious all the time. Yeah. Because we had that with Captain America and a Winter Soldier, or uh, oh, Falcon and a Winter yeah. Soldier, and then uh, Hawkeye was a little bit, there was a bit of humor in there, but not all the time. Mm -hmm. And then this one was a little bit more, it's like, yeah. hey, yeah, we yeah, got Ms. some Yeah, Ms. had kind of a mix of it, and then this one is really, I would, I would, I would describe this as a comedy series. Oh, yeah, you know? definitely. Uh, whereas Ms. Yeah. Marvel was more of a, a comedy drama you know and wandavision was a bit more on the darker yeah comedy had, it, aspect yeah and with the heavy tone in it that mm -hmm. led to dr strange and the multiverse of madness right right but yeah yeah the, that's our coverage for episodes four five and six of she hulk attorney at law uh as far as like certain news i have a, a little bit of news which actually does relate to this to some degree well we talked about daredevil a little bit well not only is Charlie Cox reprising his role as Daredevil, as we know, but we also get Eldon Hansen coming back as oh, good. Foggy Nelson. Good, good. Yeah, Foggy Nelson. So we get Daredevil Reborn with uh, at least uh, Eldon Hansen as Foggy Nelson. Mm -hmm. The one that I'm hoping that they do get back would be Deborah Ann Wall. Yeah, yeah. Now, is and, that supposed uh, to be a series or is that just a movie or have they it's said? A series, it's a series, but they're okay. going to incorporate Charlie Cox's Daredevil into the MCU as well. Yeah. So it's it's a cool thing, and I'm just hoping that we do get most of the cast. We already know, it's been confirmed that John Bernthal will be back, as far as I know, in a, in a few places that have been stating it. And so it's it's perfect. You definitely need these characters. We already got the Kingpin. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're slowly getting back some of that stuff. Originally... It was supposed to be Kristen Ritter's character and mm, uh, Jessica yeah. Jones to be yeah. back, but now they pushed it, and I think it's going to be Bernthal's Punisher that's going to be coming in, mm. and it's probably going to be, uh, I think John Bernthal will be reintroduced during the Daredevil Reborn series. Mm, okay. So that'll be cool. Next up, well, obviously we recorded this a while after, but... D23 was out, but they had a lot of trailers for Disney, one of which that you can actually do see on Disney Plus, and I had to look for it because I forgot, and I only heard rumor. It's like, yeah, well, we saw this there. They released a Werewolf by Night trailer for the one of the next Disney Plus series. Yes, I saw something about that today. Uh, Michael Giacchino is uh, the musical guy is going to be doing, doing directory. I think it's a movie or a TV movie, something like that. I don't think it's yeah. a series. It's a, it's a one-off something. Which which uh, like introduces uh, Werewolf by Night mm -hmm. into to the MCU or and you know the Marvel whatever, but at least they you know we get that because we I was talking about that during Moon Knight because I thought those uh, what were they the jackals the jackals yeah the, yeah I thought the jackals were uh, Werewolf by Night because that was a key scene in Moon Knight mm -hmm. and that's literally how Moon Knight was introduced right but 
yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. It is the way the trailer plays out looks like an old Universal Monsters movie trailer with the black and white and everything. So it looks kind of eerie. So it, they might be going into this monster verse portion of, uh, hmm. of the MCU with this because they have Werewolf by Night. Right. Next would be Man Thing and Ghost Rider at one point was part of that crew that they, it was literally the monster, like a monster squad for, you know, cause they had Morbius, Man Thing, Ghost Rider. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, a whole bunch of people. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I'm, I just, I like the, the old Universal and the way they did this in a Universal way. I thought it was pretty cool. Interesting. Okay. So check that out, everybody. But, uh, yeah. That, that was our coverage. Um, we'll just move on in. I see you got a podcast recommendation. Yeah, I just, if, if anybody likes sports betting shows, uh, Jim Rome has started one called Jim Rome's Big Head Bets. And that's, uh, that's uh, based, they took a section from his radio show and they have made it into a podcast now. So if you're interested in sports betting, it's also, it's just fun to listen to these two guys go at it, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, about each other and stuff. So it's a pretty fun podcast to listen to. They're usually pretty short. I don't think they're more than 30, 40 minutes. So that's cool. Yeah. There's uh, an episode that I was on just recently that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, it was Rob's Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. That's on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. We covered the uh, top five, and it's done like a um, a football fantasy pick, okay. the way we had to do it. So it was interesting. I never did anything like that before. But I'm on there. Rob's on there. Our friend Joe is on there. So, uh, yeah, we do all Steven Spielberg movies. So it was really weird how to break it down. But check that out when you get a chance. Cool. Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. And I guess we should move into, uh, well, where can people hear us? Well, obviously, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice, whether that be Google Play, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. If it's uh, available to give us a rating or a review, we would love to see that and give you a shout out here on the show. Oh, okay. For feedback. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you could uh, check us out on our on our website, panels to pixelspodcast.com. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. Uh, we're also on Twitter. So at panels and the number two pixels. So at panels two pixels. We have an email address, which is panels two pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels two pixels one, the TO spelled out right in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. We are on YouTube. All you have to do is search panels to pixels podcast. Uh, while you're there, give us a thumbs up if you like what we do or subscribe. Uh, or that way you get alerted every time we have a new one up. The more that are there, the more we are found. Excellent. We are on Instagram at panels to pixels podcast, all spelled out in words. We'd like to encourage everybody to check out the other podcasts on the next level podcast network. So we highly recommend them all. Wilhelm, Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to next level radio online.com and check them out there. Coming up, uh, hopefully, uh, life has been happening for both Mark and I. So coming up will either be the Umbrella Academy's next next episode or Shield. Yep. Yeah, continuing on with that venture. And well, where else can listeners hear us? For me, I send feedback uh, and voicemails to various other podcasts. I mentioned uh, Podcastica's She Hulk cast at the beginning of uh, this podcast. And, uh, and others like it, I send voicemails too, so you might hear my voice on somebody else's podcast. Cool. And you can hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that can be found on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. You guys know the deal. Everybody who listens to this, I say the same spiel. But uh, you could, we cover action, adventure, fantasy, all those stuff that makes your adrenaline going. So uh, next up on the dock would be Prey. I'm going to be recording with Je uh, Jerry soon on Omega Man. Very cool. Probably the next couple of days. But, uh, yeah, that, that's it for our show, and we hope you like it. Uh, same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. We'll see you in the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.